Yes. All right. And uh, we are on an Idaho for Brian Koberger kick right now. And I should have said this right in the beginning, right? Our main case for anybody that is new right now is the Brian Koberger case and the Idaho four case where we cover a new topic, a new uh, avenue of the case at least once a week. Uh, however, because there's been multiple documents dropped, we are covering uh, the documents dropped. Now, there were three. We're covering two of them. The third one is very long. We might do it in a different video, just not the right time during the podcast. Um, but number two here, and this one is interesting. All right. So, this is uh, February 1st of 2024 in the district court of the second judicial district of the state of Idaho in and for the county of Latah, state of Idaho versus Brian C. Koberger. Motion to allow certain experts and investigators protected access to view IgG materials. Comes now Brian C. Koberger by and through his attorneys and hereby moves this court for an order allowing certain experts and investigators protected access to view IgG materials. Counsel for Mr. Koberger has reviewed the materials currently available under the court sealed order for disclosure of IgG information and protective order filed with the court on 12-29-23 and request the court to include additional members of the defense team access to the materials. Mr. Koberger, the, the, Mr. Koberger specifically requests the current protective order to expand and allow defense experts Dr. Leah Larkin, Bicca Barlow, and Stephen Mercer access to the materials. Further, Mr. Koberger requests that the criminal investigators that are part of the defense team be allowed to have access to the materials as well, expanding the current protective order to include additional members of the defense team and experts includes each additional person subject to the restrictions of the in the protective order. This request is grounded in Mr. Koberger's Sixth Amendment right to effective assistance of counsel and counsel's ongoing duty to investigate the case brought against Mr. Koberger. <clears throat> Access to these materials is necessary to investigate how and when Mr. Koberger was identified as a suspect. Dated this first day of February 2024. Bam! Signed what do you think? Ann Taylor. <clears throat> Um, I found <clears throat> it super interesting immediately that Gabrielle Vargas was not mentioned on that list of experts. It was Leah Larkin, Bicca Barlow, and Steve Mercer. No Gabrielle Vargas in sight. Yeah, so... I've wondered about that too. And what's interesting is we've actually talked about this topic two other times, if I'm remembering correct, which you can't depend on my memory, just to be honest. Uh, but we've talked about this at least before. And, uh, you know, Vargas did uh, a show with Truth and Transparency, right? Yep. And uh, Vargas was really open, didn't break any rules of the gag order, uh, but really let like got personal with truth and transparency. And uh, in a way where I believe uh, just being in sale, I, I want to be very careful how I say this because I don't want to offend anyone. You know what I mean? Um, I'll use myself as an example. So, you know, it, it's 2024 nowadays. I, am in sales. I've had my tattoos visible before, right? And uh, in the process of removing them, it takes a long time uh, because there are still people to this day, to this very day that will look at my tattoos and feel some type of negative way about working with me before we've even had a conversation to talk about what I'm going over. So there is still judgment out there in the world, right? Uh, now, if I was in California, no one would think twice. Like, who cares what your tattoos say? I, no one out there would probably even care enough to know what they even said, even though they don't say anything bad. But using that as an example, right? When she went on Truth and Transparency, um, the Truth and Transparency, which 
is not anything bad against her. Uh, but that that channel has brought some drama because of some of the stuff she's uncovered and some of the topics she's covered before. Right now, you have that paired with an expert and that expert going on there. Um, I think that could make some viewers feel a negative type of way about it. Therefore, making her not a great option to bring to court where bias is very important. And I hope I said that in a respectful way because I don't think there's anything wrong going on there. I just think that that might maybe could be why or maybe she didn't want this kind of attention anymore or she felt some type of way because the whole FBI situation. You know what I mean? I don't know. Yeah, I, my mind immediately goes to the FBI. Bill Thompson ha having the FBI go there. And Taylor reaching out like, what the heck is going on? Why did the FBI go to a defense uh, witness's house um, to talk defense to her? Expert, yeah. yeah, defense expert's house, witness. She took the witness stand, mm -hmm. expert, whatever. Um, why did this happen? Why was I not notified at the behest of the prosecutor? Like, why are they doing this for the prosecutor? She literally reached out and was like, Gabriel Vargas just called me and told me this. Like, what is going on? That can't happen. But that means what the FBI did worked, though. That's why I'm hesitant to do that, because based on my character read of Vargas, she does not seem like the type of person that would uh, present as an expert witness and 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 be bullied out of having an opinion and I backing agree up with your you. science. I so. agree with you, but we're not just talking about anybody we're talking about the fbi uh, we don't know what was said like they have i'm sure more avenues and ways to get somebody to stop talking um than like your average police officer or person uh, I just, um we just gotta be careful because that's making an assumptive no i'm not that, saying like, it's even negative the fbi could have done additional things than just show up and want to have a conversation and make her uncomfortable yeah because but that is what happened you're, but. you're implying that that inherently means it's negative what if she's involved in something with the fbi and they're like look we don't think it's a great idea you're doing this because you're involved in this. Yeah, I, that's why I, I'm saying so this. So I have right no now. idea why. Now, does it seem shady to me subjectively because it seemed like it was requested by the prosecutor in this case? Yeah, it seems shady, but I don't know. I have no idea. I just, my mind immediately goes to that because after that, you never heard Vargas's name in anything anymore and yeah vargas comes from a rough neighborhood growing up like she's a tough woman she's a strong woman so do i think she would just back down off an opinion because somebody bullied her absolutely not um, no i think you gotta but, expand on what you just said that's important because i i didn't at first consider that and i don't think a lot of people that first saw this and saw like oh my gosh the fbi is threatening an expert witness i don't think they would make that connection either but i could be wrong but the fact that the fbi could have approached her and said hey look you can't continue working on this case because you are our expert in this other case we have going on or it could be something that is not threatening at all yeah it could have not been threatening yeah, so there could be real reasons why she can't continue on this case that could impact her expert opinion on other things, too. So, like, there are also possibilities where it's a positive, you know what I mean? Uh, overall, whatever. Yeah, we have mm -hmm. no idea. It's honestly a shot in the dark. Like, I don't know. I, I think that there's possibilities for anything because just like there's corrupt people and mess up people, there's corrupt agents and officers. They're out there. So I don't, I don't know, but it is odd that she was the only witness that had the FBI go to her house and she's the only witness not testifying anymore. Now I did want to mention though, that people kept calling, like saying, you know, Vargas was really sticking it to the man and, you know, calling out the FBI so is Bicca Barlow, though, and Leah Larkin. She was calling out the FBI? She said that. That's why I was confused why everyone was like, go Vargas, because I don't understand what she said that was any different, honestly, than Bicca Barlow or Leah Larkin, because Leah Larkin's declaration, Bicca Barlow's declaration, and Vargas's declaration all included that they all three knew 
that law enforcement was bypassing these servers like that, that they could go into people who did not consent to law enforcement using their genetic profiles and use it anyway by creating a user account or there's a back end way of doing it. Like they all three said that. Yeah. And here, so I'm confused why Vargas was picked for the FBI to so, visit. If all of them are saying, look, we know law enforcement is doing this. So all of them said look, that. Here's another theory too. Again, using the truth and transparency uh, interview and uh, and stream. So I don't know if I saw any other creator where she went on their stream. Now, Lana, truth and transparency. Uh, I I believe based on what I've seen, I could be wrong here, so don't quote me. Up, but I believe she thinks that Brian Koberger is innocent, right? And she's fighting against like the investigation, things like that. Maybe she doesn't know like us. I'm not sure. Um, but um, if you go on a platform where you have a creator that is fighting to potentially prove his innocence or against the prosecution and you didn't go on another person's platform that does believe in his guilt, that also could show bias, which causes problems for the defense. It minimizes that expert's opinion and testimony because there could be bias. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying. Um, she and did, as a defense, she did, you do not want She to. did do an interview on one other person's channel, but I believe they are friends with Truth and Transparency, but okay. I don't know that they are fighting for things like that. I don't really know much about their channel, but she did go on one other person's, but sure. I don't know if that was pre-expert testimony or not, uh, to be honest. I just know I've seen that interview before randomly. Well, it's just important to, to note that like, it could be a non-negative thing too. I think that's really important because I think that depending on how you're looking at this case, it's very easy to go there. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I mean, the only person I've seen do an interview since that that is an expert is Bicca Barlow, but that was with the State Bar of Wisconsin, you know? That was a yeah. lawyer thing and she's doing a presentation. Like, she's not getting personal and going on a like true crime podcast and chopping it up. And, mm -hmm. you know, she's not doing all of that. So, I mean, I could see why that could affect her ability to continue to be an expert witness. I, I do. Sure. Um, but you know, well, I, I think too, that even without her, and she is an incredible expert, I'm not trying to minimize well, anything. Yeah, and like I said, is. nothing I'm saying should be taken as disrespect because it absolutely is not. I'm just, she's an expert in what she does. And, and I'm, I'm not saying I'm an expert, but if I can see the problems that her coming back after like presenting in that way could cause the defense, obviously the defense and, and prosecution who are the experts in law could see those problems too. But to be fair, this lineup is still literally world leading lineup here with Leah Larkin, Bicca Barlow and Steven Mercer. Those are like, Top of the top of their profession. They are leading in this expedition like worldwide leaders in these topics with multiple of them having a background in forensics and DNA forensics and law. It is an incredible lineup. And if I'm going to be willing to believe somebody most without seeing the evidence myself, it, it's going to be one of these three people. Yeah. Personally. And I am thrilled. This is exactly what I wanted to see. And I don't care if it's coming from the prosecution. I don't care if it's coming from the defense. I want real scientific experts, people that do this for a living, people that do this all the time, people that have a ton of years under their belt that have been able to see the ins, the outs, the ups, the downs, the good, the bad, and everything in between, and are going to be able to speak to it in that fashion and say, look, let me really break it down for you, you guys. Let me show you some comparisons. Let me show you this. Let me show you that. Let me show why. Let me show how. Let me show who. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. this is exactly 
what we are hoping to see. Exactly what we are hoping to see. I, I agree. I agree 100%. Um, I just found it really interesting, you know, the, the, the only name that wasn't listed, but I'm glad that they're doing this, though. Going back to, like, what they're asking for, asking for this IgG to yep. be looked at by these experts, that's exactly what I hoped we would see, that they would dig into this and try to get to the bottom of it. Any chance <clears throat> either side has the opportunity to not include the opinion of the other side. So what I'm talking about is anytime the prosecution can uh, prove a point, right, in their investigation by not including police, not including the school, not including anybody that has any sort of buy-in to Brian Koberger being guilty, that is amazing. Anytime the defense can prove their argument points or questions by not including anybody that has anything to do with the community, but just a buy-in into the science and the data and the information, that is a huge win. So I hope that Ann Taylor continues to bring experts on to say, you know what, it, I understand your police are saying this, but I actually have a world-leading expert that's going to walk us through this science. And they're going to tell you why they see the science in this way, how they see the science in this way. And why it means this or doesn't mean this. You know what I mean? And i that's what I'm excited for. So I'm super stoked to see this. Like, really excited to see this. Me too. Really. And I hope that they have a full lineup for uh, any vehicle breakdown, video breakdown. If I was Ann Taylor, I would be getting this level of experts to verify every video footage since there were officers in here who have already been proven by a court of law to have manipulated footage and timestamps in other cases. I hope to see this in the uh, cellular. I hope to see this in everything. I don't care if it comes from the prosecution or the defense. Like I just want actual scientists that are professionals because cops are not professionals in science. I don't care what anybody says. Just because you've gathered a lot of evidence that needs to be checked by science doesn't make you an expert in the science. Nope. You know, you're an expert at using a bag and not getting your DNA and fingerprints on it. Like, I would consider you an expert at that. I mean, investigators aren't. Not I mean, cop. Cops aren't experts at that. At gathering evidence in a bag, I think they are. No, I think they're. I think that they're good enough to understand, like why you need to have gloves on. No, you're right. You're right. But like that's why they have a forensic unit come out. They don't actually do a lot of the forensic gathering of crime scene no, evidence. But sometimes they but, do. But sometimes yes, yep. they do have they're to collect things in bags. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So <laughs> they're like expert baggers, for sure. Um. But leave the science to the scientists. They're expert baggers. But let us know what you think and how you feel about it. Are police expert baggers? I think they are. I wasn't asking you. I don't think there's anything wrong with that either. I was like, asking them. Yeah, somebody's got to do it. And whoever does it should be an expert about it. 